Welcome to Highline Excel class number 50. Hey, if you want to download this workbook and follow along, click on my YouTube channel, then click on my college website link, and you can download the workbook Week 9, Business 214. Hey, if you're enrolled in the class, just go to our Week 9 website. Hey, we're talking finance here, and we want to value an asset using discounted cash flow analysis. Now we're going to start off with the PV function, then do the NPV function, and then we'll see the XNPV function. Here's our situation. You're consider buying a machine that will yield 35,000 net cash flow uh, for the next 10 years. If you must earn a minimum return on investment of 15%, should we buy the machine if it costs 165,500? The only trick is we have these 35,000 this is a plus coming in over the next 10 years. We have to look at all of those cash flows, take out what we assume is about a 15% uh, interest or return, discounting all the cash flows back, and then compare it. If 65500 seems like a good deal, then we'll buy it. If it doesn't, we won't. So let's see how to do it with the present value. Here's our periodic uh, equal amount cash flow. That means that this amount will be coming in at the end of each year, up to 10 years. So the time periods are equal, and the amount, $35,000, are equal. So that if those two things are true, and then you have your the constant interest rate, you can use the PV function. PV, our rate is going to be 15%. That's per year. NPER is number of periods. The PMT, this is going to be a positive because it's coming in. This is an asset that's earning 35,000 bucks. We don't have a future value, and we can leave the type off because this is at the end of each period. That's the default. Close parentheses and enter. So there it is. It says minus $175,500. $656.90. That means that we would be willing, given our 15% return, we'd pay this much to receive $35,000 each year. That means we're willing, given our rate, to pay this much. So if the asset only costs this much, what are we going to do? Are we going to buy it? You betcha, we are going to buy it. Because we're willing to pay this much, the price is less, we buy. Here's the difference to if you use the net present value and calc I mean if you use the present value function, calculating the difference will give us the net present value or the 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 profit, the, the gain that we get to use uh, other synonyms. We say equals this one minus this one and the double negative will give us our positive. Now there's another way to do this. We'll do the so there it is. That's our, in essence, the difference, which is our net present value or uh, gain. Net present value is another way to do this, and we'll see how to do this. Use the net present value function with uh, a series of cash flows. We w wouldn't really use it in this situation because the cash flows are the same each period, but we'll see how it works in comparison to this one, and then we'll move on to a different example. Equals NPV. And the NPV, all it wants, is the rate. So I'm going to click on the 15%. And then all the values. Now here's the deal. The time periods have to be the same for N NPV, but the cash flows can be different. Let's just see how it works with this even cash flows, because they can be the same, too. You just wouldn't want to type all this out, right? Because the present value function, if they're the same each period, you only type it in once. But nevertheless, let's do this and. Net present value, you cannot put a zero value in, a time zero value. Whereas our next XNPV, we are going to be able to do that. But NPV, forget it. You can't put a zero amount in. Oh, that is the full amount, but watch this. How do we get net, uh, the actual net present value? We have to consider time zero payment, which is the cost. So we simply add this one right here. And that formula right there will tell us it is the same. Now, s payments are equal. Time periods are equal. By all means, oops, by all means, you use the PV. But watch this. Here's where the NPV comes in so handy. 
we have different cash flows. So we have 40, 40, 40, 35, and they could be anything. But Cash flows are different, but the time between each cash flow is the same. So let's see our similar example here, but with uh, some 40,000s early on. Net present value, our rate is going to be our 15%, comma, and the values not including time zero, cannot include time zero, close parentheses, and then we'll simply do our adding of time zero. Because the net present value only deals with uh, the periodic flows one year out, and that brings it back, it, it discounts it back down to this uh, particular time. Then we hit enter, and there we go. So we, you could change any of these, right? If this was uh, 20,000, this was uh, 10,000, so it's getting less and less. This is 5,000, and this is zero. Okay, well, we still, in that case, uh, take this project. If it cost 65000 and it gave us these uh, cash flows, maybe this one is two five. Now, so what we've done is we've seen present value, cash flows the same, time period the same. We saw net present value. The cash flows are different, but the time between each cash flow is the same. Now let's look at our final example here. And I'm going to change the column width here, so I can try to fit this on. Now we have different dates, so they're not. It's not all one year, one year, one year, one year. It's uh, a one year, and then it jumps to three year, four, five, six. So there's an anomaly in here. There's a, a jump where we're not for a couple of years. We're not going to get any cash flows, and the cash flows are different. So we have pay 500, we get 200, 100, 100, 100, 100. So dates different, not. Um, Dates different, cash flows different, then you use XNPV. Now let's go ahead and use our XNPV. Equals XNPV. It wants the rate, and there's our 15%, comma, and the values. Now in this function, and you just have to remember it, it wants cash flow ze or time zero. It's programmed to deal with that. So it has our values and then dates. We simply type in the dates. And guess what? These dates I have here are all on January 1st, but they don't have to be. They can be any period. You could have, like we have year, two years, year, year, or month, six month, year, one day, whatever. Whatever these dates are, XNPV can deal with it. Close parentheses and control enter. So we're getting a uh, minus one hundred ten dollars and thirty one cents so that is the uh, net pre the net present value if the price is minus five hundred and we think we're only willing to pay minus one hundred ten dollars and thirty one cents no way do we buy that now let's look at the XNPV uh, or let's look at an alternative way to solve this problem. Here is the present value function, and it requires if we do it to add a bunch of columns um, and have years like this and cash flows, and then we get a different answer. Let's just look at here. We can actually discount this cash flow for zero time periods, and it says exactly uh, that it's worth that minus 500. But this formula will work all the way down because we have the interest rate. We have the NPER, as we copy it down, it'll move to 1, 3, 4, 5, etc. And then we have the cash flow. If I copy it down, you could see that it comes here and it works just fine. So you could actually calculate present values individually and add them up. Now, why do we get a difference here? This is an annual rate. These are annual periods here 1, 3, for, so th that's the year, and our contract says 15% per year. Well, the problem is there's a leap year with 366 days. The year 2008 had 366 days. Oh, actually, I think 12 does too. So there's a couple extra days in there. Let's um, click here in XNPV, and if you, you did these calculations and you're like, oh man, why is it 10 cents off? Well, go look at help. I'm going to click on the XNPV and then click up here. And wow, this is awesome for all functions. If you can't figure something out, whether it's the uh, NPER function, which has a strange little uh, 
uh, truncates the exponent or the XNPV that's having some trouble, this help will help you out. I'm going to click right there and scroll down. Oops. Let's see if I can fit this on the screen. <coughs> By the way, this is a great trick, too, because if you don't know how to use a function, you just go and it tells you how to use it. If you read through here, it uh, there it is. It tells you um, the algorithm or the math formula. And you can see right there, 365 days. So it's taking uh, the late, whatever the latest date is, comparing it to the original date at zero pay date and dividing them by 365. Why does it have to do that? Oh yeah, because it can do days. It can do year or month or days or whatever. But that 365 means on the years uh, where it's 366, there's going to be a slight miscalculations. Now I'm going to click cancel here. I actually, you know, when I encounter something like that, I always uh, try to go and do it myself to prove that you get the right answer. And I built this little formula, uh, present value formula, and used a denominator for the exponent of 365, copied it down, and got and uh, duplicated what the XNPV. Ah, but doesn't really matter. You know, this is all estimation. These are all cash flows in the future. Are you? 100% sure that these are exactly right? No, you're not. So a couple days off is not going to bother, especially when you have lots of analysis to do. Oh, the XNPV is great because different dates, different cash flows, and it works. So there you go. XNPV, NPV, and uh, if I double click here, the PV. Amazing functions for discounted cash flow analysis for valuing assets. All right, we'll see you next uh video